Hi, everybody. This is Peter Schiff at Euro Pacific Precious Metals, and I wanted to spend a few moments talking about bitcoins. And while I have a lot of sympathy with what the Bitcoin community is trying to achieve, I just think they have the wrong vehicle. You know, I think the idea behind bitcoins was to digitally replicate gold, kind of a gold standard for the Internet. Gold 2.0, as some people have uh, alleged. And, you know, if you look at bitcoins, the way they come into existence is that they're mined, just like actual gold. You mine them into existence. And just like mining gold, when you mine for bitcoins, you actually expend real resources, real energy. There is a cost associated with creating a bitcoin, just like there is with gold. In contrast to uh, central banks that create pretty much limitless amounts of currency uh, for nothing, out of thin air, at virtually no cost. And also, like gold, there is a limit. There is a scarcity in that there are only 21 million bitcoins that can be mined into existence. I think right now there's maybe around 11 million, uh, so there's still more that can be created, but again, it's going to cost money uh, to do so. And also, like gold, uh, bitcoins are divisible. You can take one Bitcoin and make 100 million fractional Bitcoins that collectively uh, would have the value of a whole coin. But the idea is that you can break your Bitcoin up into smaller increments for transactions, just like gold. You can have an ounce of gold, but then you can have a half ounce. You can have a tenth of an ounce. So you can make smaller quantities that are more ideal for transactions. But unlike gold, you can instantaneously, you can send your Bitcoin over the internet. You can't do that with gold. You can't transport gold because gold actually has substance. Bitcoins exist in cyberspace. When you have gold, uh, you, you have to protect it. You, you know, it could be stolen. You have to guard it. Maybe it costs money to store it. You, not, you have none of this. You, it doesn't cost you any money to store your Bitcoins in your, your digital wallet. So Bitcoins really replicate all of the properties of gold even improving on some of them. But here's the problem. They replicate all the properties except the single most important one. See, without that property, gold never would have been money. I'm talking about value, intrinsic value of the metal itself. You see, Bitcoin doesn't have any. The reason gold became money was first it was valued as a commodity. It was a luxury good known throughout the world. Everybody wanted gold. And so that you knew that if you needed something, you can always buy it with gold. Because even if the person who accepted your gold didn't want it, he knew somebody else who did. Now, gold was uniquely suited to be money over a lot of other commodities and basically won the free market competition for money because it had a lot of other characteristics. These are the characteristics that Bitcoin is replicating, but they are not replicating the intrinsic value that made gold desirable in the first place. The only reason that anybody wants Bitcoins is because they believe somebody else wants them. They want them to exchange them for the things that they want. People want gold for itself. Yes, it can also be used uh, to exchange, but it has a value unique to itself. It has its own properties that are desirable. There's nothing you can do with a Bitcoin except give it to somebody else. Now, there are people that might say, well, that's intrinsic value. The fact that it's easier to use than gold gives it intrinsic value. No, it doesn't. Go back to the original currencies. You know, the original currencies were issued by private banks. In fact, if you go back to the beginning, the first currency was issued by a goldsmith. Somebody took their gold to a goldsmith and he gave him a warehouse receipt for that gold. Now, the person who owned a warehouse receipt from a reputable goldsmith, instead of going back to the goldsmith and fetching his gold, he might be able to take that receipt and exchange it with somebody else who had goods and services that he desired, and the other person might accept it because they recognize the receipt, they know it's a reputable mint, they know there's gold there, and so that warehouse receipt can circulate as currency. That's what banks did. You know, before the Federal Reserve in 1913, private banks all around the United States issued their own note currency. The currency was backed by gold that the banks had in their vaults. 
but it was easier to use the currency. Rather than lugging around gold, you can use these banknotes. So the original paper currencies had a benefit that gold didn't have in that it was easier to use than the gold itself, but that didn't give paper money backed by gold intrinsic value. The only reason the paper had value was because it was backed by the intrinsic value of the gold. If there was no gold behind the paper, nobody would take it. Now today, of course, we don't have legitimate currency. We have fiat currency. There is nothing behind the dollar, which is why people think, well, then what's wrong with bitcoins? Because there's nothing behind the dollar, and so there's nothing behind bitcoins. Uh, therefore, you know, it's the same. Well, there is a significant difference. See, the dollar is legal tender here in America. Other currencies are legal tender someplace else. And even though I don't want dollars, the government only accepts dollars in payment of taxes. And therefore, if I don't want to go to jail, and I, I value not going to jail, that does have a value. The only way I stay out of jail is to have enough dollars to pay my taxes. So there is a, a, a legitimate use for dollars, even though they don't have any intrinsic value uh, the way gold does. But bitcoins don't have any intrinsic value whatsoever. So here is the problem. People are uh, advocating the use of bitcoins as if it's a form of money. But it can't be because bitcoins do not represent a store of value. You don't know what bitcoins are going to be worth next week, next year, in five years or 10 years. Nobody knows. Will bitcoins be worth zero? They might because they don't have any intrinsic value. Somebody could come up with an alternative digital currency that maybe is more attractive than bitcoins and people will use that one. Somebody might come up with a legitimate uh, digital currency that's actually backed by gold. That's not hard to do. So there are all sorts of things that might happen. In the meantime, you've got a very volatile uh, uh, Bitcoin that, you know, it swings in price. Most of the Bitcoins that have been mined are not circulating. They're being hoarded uh, by the miners uh, or people who bought some of the Bitcoins when they were just pennies apiece or a few dollars apiece. Uh, so most of the coins are being hoarded. They're not being used in commerce. They're not being sold. That's one of the reasons that the price is rising, because you have a lot of people trying to enter the market. They've been enticed into the market uh, by the spectacular gain in price and a lot of media attention uh, that has accompanied that gain in price. So you have new people coming into the market. Uh, but again, why are people buying Bitcoins? They're buying them because they believe the price is going to go up. Right? They don't want Bitcoins for the Bitcoin because you can't do anything with a Bitcoin. They're hoping to spend the Bitcoins on something else in the future. That's the problem. You see, eventually, all the people buying Bitcoins are going to want to cash in. They're actually going to want to buy stuff. And that's when you have a problem. Right? That's when the bottom drops out of the market. That's when, you know, it's not the gold standard 2.0. It's Tulip Mania 2.0. Uh, you're going to have a collapse in price in Bitcoins. I don't know where the top is, right? Is, the, is it the top now? I don't know. It might be. It might not be. We know it's not the bottom. Clearly, if you're buying Bitcoins today, you're not getting in at the bottom. You may be getting in at the top. Maybe not. Maybe somebody else is going to get in at the top. But at some point, the psychology is going to turn and the price is going to drop. In the meantime, the, 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 there's so much volatility that you can't actually use Bitcoins as money. They're not even desirable uh, for the feature where they're being marketed as, as, as a, as a you know, method of commerce because you, you can't use it because the price is too volatile. Now, I know that the Bitcoin promoters are saying, trust us, one day the volatility will go away, only the price will stabilize at some permanently high plateau, you know, to borrow an old uh, metaphor from Irving Fisher. But I think that's more wishful thinking. And I think a lot of the people who got into Bitcoins and who have thousands or of these coins or hundreds or whatever they have, they certainly have a vested interest in trying to expand the market to try to talk the market up. Now, maybe a lot of them truly believe it. If you go back to the dot-com days when there were a lot of uh, internet stocks that were losing money but had billion-dollar market caps, a lot of the people that worked at those companies truly believed in, in, uh, what they were saying. I mean, a lot of them went down with the ship. A lot of these Internet millionaires lost their entire fortune because they never sold. So I'm not doubting the sincerity of a lot of the people who own Bitcoins. I just think that their judgment is being clouded uh, by the money and by the potential of a windfall if what they're hoping to occur does.
but it's not going to happen. Because again, what makes gold money is not just the fact that uh, it can be divisible or that it's scarce, but that it has intrinsic value on its own. Without that, none of the other properties matter. So even if Bitcoin can replicate every property of gold except that one, then it doesn't matter. And right now, sure, the price is going up and people are validating their belief in Bitcoin by the rising price. That doesn't validate anything. It just as easily validates my premise that there's a bubble in Bitcoins as if there's legitimate value there. Sure, people want to get in on it. They want the action. The price is going up, so they're buying. But when the tide turns, right, look out below. A lot of people are going to want to get out of their Bitcoins. There's not going to be that many people to buy, take the other side of the trade. And then when the price plunges, you're going to have a lot of people that are going to be very upset because they paid a high price for their Bitcoins and they're going to watch the money that they put into Bitcoins evaporate. In the meantime, if you're really looking for a true store of value, right, if you don't want to be in government fiat money, if you want to be in real money that can't be created at will, that can't be inflated away, buy gold. In fact, if anything, I think the recent weakness in gold has added fuel to the Bitcoin fire because some of the people who might be buying gold but maybe are discouraged from the recent price declines and they compare that to the skyrocketing price of Bitcoins, they jump to the wrong conclusions. The price of Bitcoins are going up, therefore they, may be, they must be better than gold. I think it's going up because it's a mania, because it's a bubble. In the meantime, real value is being overlooked by people who are rightly concerned, concerned about all the money that's being printed, concerned about a currency crisis, and who want to do something about it, who want to preserve their savings. If they're choosing Bitcoins, they're making the wrong choice. Right? Bitcoins have been around for about four years. Gold's been around for more than 4,000. Will Bitcoins be around four years from now? I have no idea, but I'm confident gold will.